welcome everyone to this week's Citizens Climate University. It's a weekly webinar program of Citizens Climate Lobbies that provides CCL supporters like you and I with access to in-depth training and topics related to climate change and effective climate advocacy. I'm your host, Brett Cease, and tonight you're going to join me for a training that's going to review many of the resources available online to help you and your community explore the climate funding available from the Inflation Reduction Act. We'll be sure to review a primer on what's available for homeowners, renters, nonprofits, school districts, religious institutions, and local, state, and tribal governments. We also want to make sure to invite everyone here to bring your questions and suggested resources that you've already found useful, because that's the power of Citizens Climate Lobby. We are a collective hive that is out there learning, sharing, and empowering each other to be more effective in our climate advocacy. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm Brett Cease. I'm CCL's Vice President of Programs. I've been involved with CCL since 2011. My background beforehand was in education, and my doctorate is from UT Dallas in public policy. And I am so excited tonight to be able to highlight a lot of the work that our research team has also been doing a great job of tonight. They send their hello here as well. What I would like to do tonight, if I've done anything, is provide you all with three learning goals. Hopefully we'll be able to highlight some of the opportunities that you may or not be aware of that are available to your communities through the Inflation Reduction Act. We'd love to help you understand where to find resources to support your advocacy, both within CCL, on CCL community, as well as outside of CCL, because there is a wealth of information out there and a lot of great groups that are doing a great job of synthesizing and providing some support. So we'll feature a lot of those. We also wanna help you feel empowered by the end of this to take action in your community to extend the benefits that we're gonna to review tonight, especially a lot of the funding opportunities and help others on whatever level of stakeholder you're interested in engaging, acquire more support in seeking out or gaining access to that funding. And again, with that, our agenda is gonna be really straightforward. I'm gonna provide a quick overview to the background of the Inflation Reduction Act, just as the very top level for a slide. We'll then start by reviewing what's available that you may not be aware of on CCL Community. Some great resources there. We'll then transition to talking about support that's available on CCL Community, especially some of the great groups that are already out there and active and how you can get engaged after tonight. And then we'd love to really spend the bulk of our discussion here, at least the first half, in highlighting the outside resources that other NGOs and great think tanks out there that are engaged on this have produced. So with that, I will jump right in. And in case you didn't notice, this last year, after decades of gridlock, Congress hit the gas or the accelerator, at least, on climate action. And CCL was a huge part of that. In passing the biggest climate bill in US history, CCLers generated tens of thousands of calls this last year and messages to Congress, including more than 7,000 in that last week leading up to the big historic Senate vote. And in many ways, the climate provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act are a victory that belongs to all of us as grassroots advocates across the country have worked for decades to advance solutions on climate change and to finally see them get across the finish line. So we know that it's a big deal. We know that the climate provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act help incentivize clean energy from electric cars to electric homes. And they also invest heavily in green technology to ramp up manufacturing and meet all that demand. And we also know that affordable clean energy is a win-win-win situation, right? It's gonna help save or pre prevent premature deaths for American lives. Fossil fuel pollutes the air with toxic chemicals that sicken and kill Americans, particularly in communities near the extraction and burning of fossil fuels. We also know that it's gonna help save Americans money. That's really what we're keyed in tonight on that win-win solution. By 2030, thanks uh, to this provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act's climate provisions, every American household is projected to save $200 per year thanks to lower electricity costs. And that's everyone, whether or not you actually drive an electric car or electrify your home. And we also know it's gonna help reduce the impact of energy spikes. It turns out that uh, being dependent on oil cartels and oligarchs, as we found out this uh, last several years, uh, unfortunately with national and international news has its downsides, namely volatile energy prices, 
And we know that clean energy, on the other hand, can be American owned uh, and locally grown and keep costs cheap and predictable for decades to come. So that's why it's such an important investment. We know that our economy as Americans will be transformed in a good way. And we know that that's going to happen in a short time frame, especially thanks to the accelerated policy um, levers that the Inflation Reduction Act pulls. We know that in just eight years, by 2030, 80% of American um, electricity will be from clean sources. That's up from 40% today. The clean power production from solar, wind, and other clean sources is projected to triple now. And that the vast majority of new cars and trucks sold will be electric. We also know, as I've highlighted, that it's going to be much more affordable to electrify your home and transportation, and that is precisely what we're going to be reviewing the opportunities tonight from homeowners. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, there's several important new credits available to help households be more efficient to switch to clean energy, and this is going to make it more affordable for all of you uh, to install things from rooftop solar, heat pumps, water heaters, heat pump dryers, induction stoves, help with efficiency upgrades like insulation or new windows. We also know that no matter where you live or are tuning in, there's something for every community. There's a program that we'll review that can benefit your community to a transition and brighter, greener future. Especially disadvantaged communities are set up to receive money to address environmental and health challenges resulting from climate change, from initiatives that include community-led projects, equitable transportation access, reducing pollutions at transportation hubs near schools, and grants even to make affordable housing more energy efficient. And that's also obviously going to be a key job generator. And so we know also this, the work isn't over after this one bill. That's where we come in as well with our other focuses outside of tonight's training, continuing to advocate for the single most impactful solution out there to maximize and extend the climate benefits that we're already seeing from the Inflation Reduction Act with a strong carbon fee and dividend policy, putting a price on carbon, giving that cash back to American households and making sure the carbon border adjustment is in play to make sure to juice our own domestic manufacturing on the international level. So with that though, what I'd like to do is just highlight briefly a couple of the uh, available resources on CCL Community. I'll just highlight that as always, if you want to search community and just type in Inflation Reduction Act, you should be able to find all of these available on the top hits. We've made sure to be able to highlight these as significant algorithms. And let's start first with presentations. So CCL has put together several wonderful slideshows both in the form of trainings, which I won't get into tonight, but I will highlight a link to. We have a Inflation Reduction Act slideshow that gives an overview and provides a uh, top level summary of the main climate benefits that come from the climate provisions within the Inflation Reduction Act. And that is available as a link in the chat. It's intended for you to make a copy of and personalize and give out in your local community. And we also have a wonderful extension to that, especially if you know that you would like to give a presentation to homeowners or to people in your community that would like to know how to take advantage of the electrification and efficiency opportunities within their own home build out. So I'll put again that link in the chat towards the end. We have both a Google slide version or PowerPoint download available for you. Heavily recommend that. I'm not gonna go into the, uh, anything more than this overview tonight because both of them have trainings that stand for themselves. The other wonderful thing that I wanted to highlight is that we have handouts and flyers for your tabling opportunities. All right, so with that flyer side of things, we have some wonderful opportunities. We've had top benefit and talking point flyers that review a lot of that top level messaging that I've already reviewed, as well as how to take action or find out more information, as well as join CCL. Those have been available since last summer. Uh, but thanks to the amazing CCL leader, Steffi Rausch, we also have a new climate funds and benefit flyer since Earth Day that's available. You might not have seen it. Maybe you have. Um, it's gone through a couple of updates now since then, too, with some of the other provisions getting more clear for funding opportunities. But that's what you're seeing here on the left side featured on this slide. And this is a wonderful opportunity. It's a full page flyer that, if you look at it, provides access to over a dozen specific uh, credits available for homeowners and renters in the form of tax credits or upfront discounts that the Inflation Reduction Act provides, as well as some key links that are available as well for you. 
So heavily recommend that. And again, I won't go into all of these details because we have great trainings that really go over each of these provisions. Uh, Dana Nucitelli and our research team have done a great job of that. So just wanted to flag that as a wonderful resource that's also available for you. All right, so on the support for CCL community side, we have three wonderful areas that I'd love to make sure to spotlight tonight. Many of you I can see on the line are already heavily taking advantage of it, but just in case you haven't heard, we have a great community of nerds to help keep up uh, to speed with the climate science policy and economics research behind climate. And I put a link to it in the chat for CCL's very own Nerd Corner, one of our busiest and ro most robust action teams. You can get there from community by just clicking on the connect menu item up top, and there's a Nerd Corner click right there. It's also listed in our action team directories. And on Nerd Corner, the biggest thing that I would love for all of you after tonight to be invited to do is search our forums. There's a lot of wonderful resources on the policy, economic, science, and technology side, but especially if you have a question around the Inflation Reduction Act and you know, anything that we didn't get to tonight or that you'd like further clarification on, our research team and our community of scholars as CCL leaders across the country are just a wonderful wealth of resource. So I really wanna spotlight that as the first and foremost place for you to get help and empowerment outside of tonight's webinar. The other great thing that I would love to highlight is CCL's Electrification Action Team. This is a group of people that has just been active and are kicking it out of the park with our actual uh, building electrification and efficiency policy agenda item. The Electrification Action Team's co-leaders are Pete Marsh, Jay Bassett, Mark Friedman, Julia Morisovic, and Michael Metzner. And all of them have done an amazing job on this page. Let me put a link to it in the chat for you to be able to find out more, specifically if you have questions or would like to find resources on the electrification angle, uh, check out this other action team. They have wonderful webinars. This is another unique feature of the electrification action team. Um, they're meeting multiple times a month to engage across sector to really utilize CCL's levers of political will within all levels of government to drive greater electrification and energy efficiency. So with that, know that that's another great resource if you're not aware of that or active yet. So thank you to all of our action team leaders within the electrification action team. The last thing I'll highlight is that we also have a site-wide forum category that does a great job of being able to provide new ideas and action opportunities every month. Our national action director, Dr. Todd Elvins, does a great job of keeping that updated and curated. But then it's also a great space too for people that maybe haven't joined one of the action teams or are just looking to engage in a conversation around this key policy agenda area of ours uh, to jump into as well. So for example, tonight, uh, I have actually started a thread that is going to hopefully live on after this and build out even more resources because I know that I'm just providing a surface level primer tonight. And so if you wanted to click on that link or find it later from tonight's slides, check it out and make sure to add what you are finding useful across your local community to really make sure to implement and take advantage of the Inflation Reduction Act's climate funding opportunities. All right, so with that though, let's jump into the most significant piece of what we wanted to review tonight. And that is that there is a wealth of resources outside of CCL. Again, we are not the one-stop shop on this. This is a ecosystem approach there are so many other places that have done an amazing job of compiling information that we're benefiting from too. So rather than have to just rely on what CCL is producing, I wanted to make sure tonight to flag some of the highlights of what else is out there. And the first thing that I'll highlight, again, I'm just putting these in the chat as we go through them one by one, is something that maybe you've heard of and maybe you're not aware of, and that is specifically what the White House has produced in terms of a guidebook to help you navigate their Inflation Reduction Act recommendations. Now, what you'll see here on this screen is that they have a great job on the right-hand side kind of navigating across some specific programs or provisions or particular stakeholders. Uh, but then if you also see on the very top, this is kind of the top level overview, they have a CSV file that basically details the 115 programs, all a part of the Inflation Reduction Act that have specific audiences that are gonna benefit from the clean energy, climate mitigation, resilience, agriculture, and conservation related investment programs within 
that historic bill. And it also highlights who's eligible to apply for each of those and for which activities. So just wanted to make sure to flag that as a very top level overview in case you wanted to really zoom out and see what the actual White House is recommending. If that's a little bit overwhelming, or at least obviously from the federal level, something that you weren't quite looking for. The other big thing that I wanted to make sure that people were aware of tonight, I was checking with Dana here beforehand, and the biggest resource that I've already fielded with a couple of questions that people had before hopping on tonight is that there is a wonderful list from the Department of Energy that provides in one link a directory of all the state energy offices. And we know that the state side is where we're going to have to figure out how each of these programs and actual projects is implemented. And so if you are from Alabama, if you are from Colorado, you name it, this one link is going to help you get access to your energy office within your state, which is responsible for administering and doling out a lot of these funding opportunities. And I clicked through at least seven of these before we got started tonight, and each of them had a fairly easy page from that homepage landing to find and navigate around their Inflation Reduction Act timeline and where to go specifically within that state. So this should be a really great spot. If you haven't already checked this out, if you're curious, especially because you've heard, well, you know, I heard that the national side of things passed, but now it's up to the states to deliberate how they're going to administer this and actually make it fit within their own energy office, this is going to be your friend and help you find where you can go within the state that you live in. The other thing that I wanted to highlight, and this is an example specifically from Minnesota, since that's where I live in the land of sky blue waters, is that there's a lot of state level advocacy guidance out there. So this is a great example from a team in Minnesota that's a great climate advocacy group called Minnesota CERTS, if anyone remembers CERTS back in the day. Clean Energy Resource Teams is the acronym. And basically what they've done is provided a easy to navigate way for you to know how to uh, apply for or what you're eligible for as a homeowner or whatever the stakeholder lens you're using specifically within Minnesota. So if you're looking as an example of what one state's provided, you're welcome to check that link out that I just put in the chat for Minnesota. But it's also a reminder that if you type in your own state and Inflation Reduction Act funds, chances are you're probably at the very top of that going to be able to find a similar advocacy guide for where you're at. And if you're having a hard time finding it, that's again why we wanted to provide support recommendations. Let's just say you live in a particular state, you can't find what you're looking for, go to the forums and feel free to ask us, hey, I'm really having a hard time navigating. I live in so-and-so state. You know, Could anyone else help weigh in? And that's where the wisdom of our collective body of um, CCL knowledge is going to come in. So without uh, further ado, though, I'd love to just kind of march through things from a funding level on the stakeholders that we promised you in the description of our actual training tonight. We'll briefly review each of these. And as I'm going through these, if I'm not covering something that you're aware of, please feel free to put that in the chat and help us build out this slide deck and this overall training thread that we're going to put again on the forums to really provide as much in-depth linkage and other outside groups recommendations as possible. So I'm going to cover homeowners, renters and multifamily units, school districts, nonprofits and religious institutions, local cities, states, and tribal governments, kind of a rural perspective with what uh, is available for farmers, ranchers, foresters, and rural communities, and then a utility side of things. All right, so the biggest thing that I'll just start with is that if you're interested in another uh, spreadsheet by spreadsheet breakdown of that, the Rocky Mountain Institute, now known as RMI, has put together another great filterable list that breaks down the incentives program by program for each stakeholder. So you can see here as highlighted on this slide, the spreadsheet is developed specifically to be used by you know, local governments, both state and local municipal governments and tribal nations, as well as businesses, nonprofits, institutions of higher education or schools, and then individuals. So I've just put a link to that in the chat. You're welcome to navigate and sort and filter on that list. And a couple of recommendations I have for each of these categories then. So one of the great things that we have available to us on the homeowner front 
is something that Rewiring America has put together, the Inflation Reduction Act calculator. You can see on this slide on the left, a short link that we've generated here in CCL to it, cclusa.org forward slash IRA for Inflation Reduction Act dash calculator or dash calc. And on the right-hand side, you can see a screen grab of what this looks like. So you, with just by entering a few parameters, your zip code where you live, your homeowner status, the income level you have, your tax status, your household size, are able to generate a whole list of personalized incentives across all of the categories that homeowners and renters over the next 10 years have access to. And that does a really good job if you want to click on any one of them in particular to really dive into the details on what does it mean when we say rooftop solar or geothermal heating or heat pumps or the EV standards. So I would heavily recommend that as the first place to go as a homeowner. I also, just because I'm biased, really recommend the work that Dana did with his wonderful deck, again, that we spotlighted earlier on, on the home electrification and efficiency opportunities from the Inflation Reduction Act. So again, if you don't have that in the chat, that's a whole hour of training specifically on that from the homeowner lens that I just dropped in again. All right, so from the multifamily housing and renter market, what I would love to feature tonight is a project of the Electrification Action Team. I'll put a resource document that they're just starting to build out here on the uh, state level that you are invited to add to if you have other recommendations outside of what's currently featured. And know that it is a great compendium that especially is going to try to highlight on the state level, since that's where a lot of this action is happening, um, what also might be available or not covered by some of these other national resources. So know that you, uh, the Electrification Action Team would love to have your help in building that out and you can get started with those already there. The next thing that I'll highlight is from the nonprofit and houses of worship level, we did a really um, fun webinar uh, supporting Environment America this past May. I know that uh, seeing around the room, several of you were there. If you haven't uh, seen that, here's a great article summary from Environment America with a link to the webinar there, specifically on solarizing houses of worship. And it did a great job of highlighting what's being done throughout Texas, a lot of Texas churches and communities that are kind of highlighted within that training. And the other thing that I wanted to highlight specifically for nonprofits, and I'll put a link to this in the chat here too, is that there is a wonderful new provision that makes, thanks to the Inf uh, Inflation Reduction Act, something called elective pay available or direct pay as it's known often. It's basically a provision that allows tax exempt or you know, uh, uh, houses of worship for the first time to be able to receive a payment equal to the full value of tax credits for building a qualifying energy, clean energy project. So unlike a grant or a loan program where an applicant won't actually see that upfront um, cost uh, or that um, payment reward, what direct pay allows basically is an entity to get their payment if they meet requirements for both the direct pay and the underlying tax credit. And so if you're interested for more information on what that looks like from the White House's perspective, that's a great place to start. I'll also highlight a couple of other resources in just a bit that help you make sense of that. Um, but you might be curious, you know, which of the actual programs are eligible for direct pay? 12 of them are available including generating solar, wind, and battery storage projects, community storage projects, EV charging infrastructure, purchasing clean vehicles for state or city fleets. And you know, again, the whole key thing here about why applying from a nonprofit perspective or a city perspective is that it not only helps reduce your own energy use and save, but also save money. So you can actually spend more resources or even extend kind of what you're able to purchase to focus on that mission. And you're also obviously able to um, use that property then to generate clean electricity that benefits neighbors or other communities from a community solar installment, for example. So uh, one just potential scenario here, say you've got a 501c3 locally and it is a nonprofit focused on basically, um, you know, trying to build out solar it's got a large roof on its headquarters and it wants to install solar on its own building. 
And so through direct pay now, that nonprofit can get up to 30% of the inst installation costs back under the investment tax credit or more if it's eligible for bonus credits. So beyond the initial 30% discount that we mentioned earlier with the homeowner benefit, there are three additional adders that we wanted to make sure to highlight tonight. 10% for if you are located within what is considered an energy community, especially those uh, that are defined as being impacted by the transition from fossil fuels. 10% for projects that are using a minimum standard for domestic solar manufacturing for hardware. And all of these details, again, we'll put a link to in the chat. And then 10% for projects that are also built in a low income area. And that is defined as several criteria, including whether or not power is generated from these projects can be sold to low income families and help reduce electricity costs from community solar or whether residential projects that are built on the roofs of individual homes or low income housing apartments. So all of those are considered adders and could add up to a cumulative additional 30% for a total of 60% off. That's six zero, 60% off to your total reduction from installing a actual renewable energy project. All right, so um, the next thing that I wanted to highlight is the school and educational institution availability. We actually have a great challenge that you might not have heard of yet that is available for our students. And then Rewiring America also has a great link as well. And so with that, oh, thank you for highlighting that one of those is uh, currently protected. I'll make sure to make that available after uh, going through the slides here in just a little bit, Robert. So if you're curious about what you can do from the school district level, um, you can actually check out the work that CCL's youth team is actually really leading in the nonprofit space right now with the Great School Electrification Challenge. That's the first link. You can also see Rewiring America's Schools Challenge. Both of these use the power of social norming to generate young adults interested in taking action within their school district to electrify and help connect them to finding out information about what funding is available I'm looking around the room. I can see a couple of examples of people that are already active in that. Feel free to share in the chat any of the progress that you've had locally too. So thank you for those already on the line tonight that are um, active in doing that. The next thing I wanted to highlight is the local angle on city, states, and tribal governments. A big shout out earlier this spring to the work that our electrification action team headed up to help local governments apply for eligibility for the Climate Pollution Reduction Act in particular. That uh, has now closed and you can actually um, hear more about that effort from the electrification action team leaders. Uh, but basically the majority of uh, the broad majority of states and the largest municipalities, the big metropolitan statistical areas in the country um, were found to be eligible and are now planning climate plans that really help together, um, you know, figure out comprehensive policies that are going to lead to that uh, emission reduction goals that they have to ramp up their ambition and coordinate across their local departments. And so a couple of things that I wanted to highlight here are a uh, wonderful resource that, again that RMI has put together on guidance implementations for states. And then another wonderful resource that I know Steffi Rausch uh, again, who we highlighted earlier with that handout has put together on local government, specifically with climate plans, climate action plans, um, is also available in the chat. And I love hearing that there's also work being done on the university side of things. Yes, I know that Stephanie and the higher ed team are active on building out that electrification challenge uh, with kind of extension from not only um, high schools. So thanks for highlighting that as well, Aaron. All right, so the last two things, I'm mindful that I'm already over half time, so I'll just briefly mention these and then feel free to let's jump into Q&A. Uh, from the rural level, a wonderful resource that's available for anyone that might be curious about how Inflation Reduction Act programs can improve access to clean power in rural communities. Our friends at Evergreen Action have put together this great primer that specifically touches on two of them. Um, and we'll be able to highlight uh, this if you're curious about the Empowering Rural America program or ERA, ERA. That's a $9.7 billion fund that's going to provide rural electric co-ops with clean energy. 
And then there's also the PACE program, Powering Affordable Clean Energy, which is a billion dollar pot and provides funding for partially forgivable loans to larger eligibility pools for renewable energy projects. And specifically, again, the rural community set up for benefit in helping that funding generate more reliable energy systems. The last thing I'll just briefly highlight here is on the public utility side of things for utilities, another great resource that RMI and Evergreen put together is the implementation guidance for public utility commissions on the electricity incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act. So with that, thank you all so much for being here live. You can also give us a little rating and any comments on what could make the training better too that way. Um, so we, we take that seriously. It always helps us with our grants and our you know, demonstration of impact and advocacy by logging your trainings. And after tonight, if you have any questions like I've shared earlier here, please do feel free to reach out to me. I'm always available. You can find me at Brett at Citizens Climate, and you can also access Nerd Corner. We'd love for you to join us there, cclusa.org forward slash nerd dash corner. And uh, that is a really robust discussion that I know several people around the room tonight are active in helping provide that support for. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. Like what you hear? Recommend us to your friends and make sure to give us a five-star rating. It helps us show up on other listeners' feeds. Feel free to pass on any suggestions for future episodes in the comments as well. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.